The direction of your entire life is influenced by a few seemingly insignificant decisions you make in your 20s, one of which is the place you choose to work. For those of you looking to pursue a career in law, the plan would be to find your dream law firm. That could be a swanky inner city law firm specialising in commercial law, or perhaps a smaller boutique law firm specialising in family law. Either way, you need to find what works well for you. Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Gareth, and on this channel we discuss the strategies and tools that help law students to successfully navigate their law degree. Now today we're going to be looking at the four key considerations that you need to keep in mind when choosing your dream law firm as a wannabe solicitor. Those are the industry focus and speciality, the size and location of the law firm, the training that is given by that particular law firm and also the culture of your chosen firm. Your first consideration is whether you want to work in an inner city law firm or at a regional law firm. Large city firms such as Allen & Overy, Clifford Chance and Linklaters are often seen as the glamorous choice for law students. This is mainly because as a trainee solicitor you're going to get a very impressive salary if you work there. But it's also because as a solicitor in one of these swanky firms, you're going to have access to the impressive and exciting lifestyle that the city offers. From a work perspective, working in a city law firm can be quite a challenge. You're going to very often have to work outside the standard nine to five to finalize cases and wrap your head around a particular tricky issue. However, the work is also very diverse and rewarding. And you know, working on these multi-million pound mergers and acquisitions, as well as advising blue chip clients on various issues that's going to be in tomorrow's newspaper is always quite an exciting thought. Regional law firms, on the other hand, are perfect for those individuals who aren't so keen to work to extremely tight deadlines and aren't so energized by the thought of advising massive companies. If you work for a regional company, like a small boutique family law firm, for example, you're going to have the opportunity to have greater responsibility at a earlier stage, and you're also gonna have a much better work-life balance so that you can pursue all your other interests and hobbies outside of work. However, the major downside of regional firms is that you're not going to be working on the cutting edge, significantly influential pieces of work that lawyers in the city are going to be doing. Now, if you're interested in family law where matters are much more personal, this isn't going to be an issue. But if you're interested in being at the forefront of legal technology and legal advancements, then you're just not going to get this in your high street solicitor firm. All law firms specialise in different areas and your job is to ensure that you're working at a law firm whose interests closely match your own. So this is a process of really working out what it is that you enjoy and what you want to spend the rest of your life doing. If you've never really been interested in business, don't feel pressured to pursue the commercial law route. You need to actually sit down and think about what works for you. Perhaps it would be better to work for a firm with a slightly lower salary, but you're doing work that you truly enjoy. Or maybe you are the sort of person that would thrive on a high pressure job where the salary is enormous. And if that works, then fine, do it. But you really need to think, sit down and work out what makes you tick. As a side note, be wary of those firms that describe themselves as full service when in fact they actually specialise in a very niche area. For example, with Slaughter and May, they advertise themselves in all their marketing as a full service law firm, when the reality is, is that their speciality and their focus is very much on banking and finance. So if you think you're going to a firm where the work is going to be incredibly diverse because of the way that they've marketed themselves, you do need to take a step back and actually think, is this true? Is what they're saying exactly what is being offered? Because if you went to Slaughter and May thinking that you're going to have access to all these different areas of law, then you may be a bit misled. So do have a think about what exactly is being said to you and whether or not it is true. In other words, you don't want to spend all your time crafting the perfect law application to a law firm where you think the work is going to be incredibly diverse, but once you get there, you find that the truth is the complete opposite. So spend time peeling back the marketing gloss to find out exactly what it is that you're getting yourself into. This is something that people who are applying for a career in law don't think about nearly enough. At the end of the day, what you're applying for is to be a trainee solicitor. So the focus is very much on the training and you don't want to be working somewhere where the training isn't up to standard. The wrong law firms when it comes to you as a trainee solicitor will see you as the sort of resident photocopier. They'll be giving you the mindless tasks that they don't really want to do, printing off stuff, 
bundling things and not really focus on giving you any particular responsibility. So on the flip side, the best law firms when it comes to training will give you this early responsibility. They'll let you be the first point of contact with clients and also help manage your own sort of area of a particular transaction. So when it comes to picking a particular law firm, make sure you do think about what sort of training is on offer and how much responsibility you're going to be given as a trainee solicitor. In addition, law firms with a formalized training program are going to be the best law firms to work for when it comes to training because their particular training ensures that you are able to grow and develop as a lawyer in a very structured manner. Now, one example of a good training program comes from Hogan Lovells. Their trainee development team ensures that you have all the correct resources and courses that you need to grow, learn, and become the best possible lawyer once you qualify. Finally, try to find some information about the law firm's culture. Some of the questions you need to consider are, what sort of people do you want to work with? Is office life hierarchical or does everyone seem to get along? What's the general atmosphere like? What is the diversity of the legal staff? And does the number of partners that are female or from an ethnic minority background matter to you? Also take a look at the law firm's core values and their corporate social responsibility. You need to make sure that their values really do closely align with your own and that you wouldn't mind being associated with that particular firm. I found that the best way to find out about a company's culture is to speak directly with the training solicitors. In other words, these are the people that you're going to be in a couple of years time. Now, this does mean avoiding the partners and HR when it comes to learning about culture. And the reason for this is that I find that the trainee solicitors are a lot more open about their experience and less likely to introduce bias into what they're saying. There's less at stake for them. So if you have any hard pressing questions about probably quite touchy points for a partner or HR to answer, then do speak to the trainee solicitors. They will be open and they'll tell you exactly what you want to know. And so it's these conversations that help you to find out the true culture of a law firm. Identifying the right law firm for you isn't a process that should be rushed. At the end of the day, the place that you work and the place that you learn is going to shape who you are as a lawyer for years to come. A place with toxic culture or poor training is going to have significant lasting damage on your career. So spend time thinking about these four different things and you should have a very good shot at finding the dream law firm for you. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you check out my playlist on crafting the perfect law applications. If you want to see more, then make sure you subscribe to my channel and if you have any questions, make sure you leave a comment below. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.